peoples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All right, get ready. It's time for Offering. As we give our tithes and offerings to God, let's check out this postcard we got from our friend Nathan. I thought he asked a wonderful question about why we do what we do. Do I have to give an offering? If I don't give, will God not love me as much? Hmm. Well, let's look at it this way. Mike, have you ever given a gift to someone? Yep. I gave a basketball to Luke. Did he make you give him a gift? No, I wanted to because Luke does so many nice things for me. So I wanted to give back to him. It was a way I got to say thanks. That's exactly why we give an offering to God. Not because we have to, but because we get to, to thank him for all he has done. God is so good to us. He's given us everything we have, family, friends, the air we breathe, absolutely everything. Giving an offering is one way to say thanks for everything He's given us. And nothing you ever do or don't do will ever change how God feels about you. He loves you no matter what. Just because you give doesn't mean God loves you more. God has given us so much that we love when we have a chance to give back to Him. Thanks for your question, Nathan, and thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to say, say thanks, thanks and, and put, put God, God first. first.
Hello, Rock friends. It's game time. friends, you will learn that being a disciple is so much more. He is not only our teacher, but he is our Lord. Jesus still invites you to be a disciple and choosing to follow him means that we can have a big impact on the world. Enjoy this week's lesson. So what does this thing measure again? Oh, you know what? It actually measures the... Hold on just a second. Hello? You don't say. You don't say! You don't say! You don't say? Oh, intense. Who is that? They didn't say. Our Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. Dot, and this is the time we got to know Tony a little bit better. Today's the day. Today's again. Ah, all right. Who's ready for some taffy time with Tony? I am. Sounds like fun. Mmm, taffy. Yum. All right. Looks like uh, is everyone ready for a time slot here? Um, let's see. Uh, Vanessa, I have you down for ten. Rodney, I have you down for twelve. Mm. Little taffy before lunch. I like to live dangerously. Hmm, looks like the only person I don't have on here is you, Dot. Oh, did I forget to sign up? Well, I've been so busy, it's hard to schedule things. What have you been busy with? You know, well... Ooh, a postcard has just come in. A postcard! Let me add it. <laughs> Dear Connect HQ, I want to know God better, but it's hard when I can't see him or hear him. How do I get to know someone who's invisible? Signed, Harvey. Harvey asks a smart question. Smart question deserves a smart answer. We can figure it out. I'll stand right here all day if I have to. Oh, great, great. I was going to have Taffy time with Tony in the observatory, but I can move it in here. What time do you want to get started? Professor Malcolm's really smart. 
I'll go to the rad room and see if he has any answers. Um, okay, I'll put you down for 11. She's gonna, she's gonna come at 11. So, what do you think, Professor Malcolm? Hmm, that's a really important question. That's why I'm here. The best way, uh, the only way really, to know God better is become one of Jesus' disciples. I know Jesus had 12 disciples that were his trusted friends. Is it like that? We can be disciples too. A disciple is someone who follows someone else, gets to know them, and tries to live like them. There's that word, no. <laughs> yes, Jesus' disciples know him. The more time you follow Jesus, the better you will know him. But how do I get to know him? You need to use the right tools. I don't understand. <laughs> Let me ask you this. If I wanted to study and find all of that bacteria and other organisms living in my cup of coffee, Ew! <laughs> what instrument would I use? The microscope. It makes tiny things like bacteria look bigger. <laughs> That's right. And the more powerful the microscope, the better I can see. But Jesus isn't tiny like bacteria, is he? <laughs> no, but there are still tools we can use to help us see him. Like what? Like prayer, talking with Jesus. Like worship, celebrating Jesus. Like reading the Bible. <laughs> We can really get to know Jesus very well by doing those things. I just love Taffy. I love Taffy too. See, I didn't know that. We're getting to know each other better already. Mm -hmm. So where are you yeah. from originally? I'm in Finland. What? What are you from originally? I'm from Ohio. hot. It's Taffy in my mouth. Oh, no. I have a very, very simple menu. Okay. Or saying, you know, he. I found this great verse about getting to know Jesus in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 10. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> Philippians 3, 10. Philippians 3, 10. I want to know Christ better. I want to know Christ better. I want to know the power that raised him from the dead. I want to know the power that raised him from the dead. I know Christ is Jesus, but could you explain the part about power? Just like the first disciples experienced God's power when he raised Jesus from the dead, we can experience God's power too the more we follow Jesus. God's power answers prayers. God's power works miracles. God's power changes us to be able to live God's way. Those are just a few examples of God's power. Wow. <laughs> We're sort of like these paper clips, right? And God is powerful like <laughs> this magnet here. And the magnet has a power, but the paper clips are too far away to experience it. It's the same with us. If we don't get to know God, we may never experience his power. But if we get to know Jesus and follow him more and more, we get closer to him. The closer we become, the more we see, really see, and experience God's power. Where is Dot? She was supposed to be here 10 minutes ago. Ah! Oh. Hey, Maurice. Hey, Tony. I was just finishing up some routine maintenance on the ductworks. I thought I'd drop in and see if I can still sign up for some taffy time with Tony. Well, yeah, actually, uh, Dot didn't show up for her time slot, so go ahead and have a seat. But it's no longer taffy time with Tony. It's now taco time with Tony because we couldn't understand each other with taffy in our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love tacos. So you always been in the tools and fiction stuff? Mm. My third grade teacher's name was Mrs. Stencil. Why you ask? Mm. I always wanted to be an astronaut, too. Mm. I think we're getting to know each other really well. 
It's 11.15! Oh, it's good. Mm-hmm. You're looking at your watch. Do you need to leave? Tony wanted everyone to meet with him today. Oh, yes. My taffy time with Tony is at 2 o'clock. I can't wait. I love taffy. It's so delicious. <laughs> hey, you don't want to go? Can I confess something to you? I don't really like taffy. It hurts my teeth. I don't think it's about the taffy. Tony wants to get to know everyone better. I think you should keep your appointment. Maybe you're right. It's just, I think I need another example of knowing God by seeing His power. Of course! I'll demonstrate with my mobile wind machine. That's a mobile wind machine? You can't see wind. It's invisible. But you can certainly feel its power. <laughs> I don't feel anything. That's because you're too far away. But see, or rather feel, as it comes closer, the closer it gets, the more you experience its power. Dude, I get it. <laughs> the more you get to know God, the more you feel his power too. The power of his Holy Spirit that lives inside of us when we choose to follow Jesus. This turkey is great. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, really quiet. I meant it tastes good. Oh, I'm sorry, I must be feeling sleepy or something. Professor Malcolm said there's this thing in Turkey called tryptophan, or something like that. It makes you sleepy. Have you ever heard of tryptophan? Tony, Tony? <laughs> Train time with Tony, hmm? The first disciples had it easy. They could talk to Jesus and watch him every day here on earth. Yes, it would be nice to be able to see Jesus. But think about this. When Jesus was here on earth, he could only be in one place at a time. So only a small number of people could really get to know him. That's true. How awesome is it that Jesus made it possible now for all of us to spend time with him, to get to know him? But not everyone does spend time with Jesus. Even when Jesus was here on earth, not everyone who met him or heard him speak or saw his miracles followed him. Why not? They just didn't have the right soil. What? You see, we're like soil. And then there's these birds and, and, and rocks and... <laughs> Here. Jesus tells it better than I do. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. See the wonderful story. Through history and poetry How much Jesus loves me God's great story lives There's no other book like this This book is alive Jesus liked to teach by telling stories His stories were called parables Because they always had a hidden meaning That taught a lesson Listen A farmer went out to plant some seeds As he scattered the seeds across the field the seeds fell in all different places. Some of the seeds fell on the hard path, and the birds came and ate them. Some of the seeds fell on the shallow rocky soil. But once the hot sun came up, the baby plants wilted and died because they didn't have deep roots. Some of the seeds fell among thorns. The thorns grew up and choked out the baby plants, and they died too. Some of the seeds fell on good soil, and they grew up to be healthy plants that made a hundred times more seeds. Anyone who is really listening will understand. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables to teach the people? People whose hearts are open to me will understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. I'll give them the ability to understand, but to those whose hearts are closed, 
they won't get it at all. They'll hear my words, but won't understand them. Your eyes will be blessed for really looking for me. Your ears will be blessed for really listening to me. Here, let me explain the parable and you will see what I mean. Like the farmer spreading the seeds, I'm here to spread the good news about God's love for the world. The seed represents that message and how people respond to it in all different ways. The seeds on the hard path are like the people who hear God's word, but close their hearts to it and don't let it sink in. It's easy for the devil to snatch away the truth planted in their hearts. The seeds on the shallow rocky soil are like people who received the message with joy. But since they don't continue to learn and grow, they don't last long. They give up as soon as they have problems or things get tough. The seeds among thorns are like people who hear God's word but then let the message get crowded out by distractions and worries and chasing after stuff so they never grow or put it into action. But the seeds that fell on good soil are like those who truly hear and understand God's word. When they put it into practice, they spread the good news to others, and a hundred times more people hear the message too. What kind of soil will you be? If you really listen and really look and really open your heart to God, you can be the good soil. God's word will grow inside of you and you can help spread the good news about Jesus all over the world. So knowing Jesus isn't just hearing him once and then we're done. We have to continue getting to know him and trusting him. Even when hard times come, like the rocky soil. Jesus' disciples know him and getting to know him is a lifelong process that requires spending time with him. Just like getting to know anyone. Like Tony. Mm. See, my problem was requesting food. You can't understand anyone with a taco in their mouth. You gotta do an activity to really get to know somebody. I am loving this toe touch time with Tony. So, Rodney, where do you see yourself in five years? Five years? I like to... <coughs> oh, well, you, can, you can stop and catch your breath if you need to. I like to be in better shape. Like me. Dot, you made it! Am I too late for taffy time with Tony? Well, it's no longer taffy time with Tony. I had to kind of revise things a few times. I can see that. I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. I didn't realize why this was so important to you. But now you do? Yes. If someone is important to you, you want to make the effort to get to know them. Thanks, Dot. You're important to me, too. So, how about this? Are you ready for some trampoline time with Tony? That sounds like fun. Okay, good. Let me just, you know, let me just find a trampoline. Give me a few hours. A few hours? Maybe we should skip the trampoline then. Hmm. Okay. Well, how about tuba time with Tony? No. Toothpaste time with Tony? Ew! No! Ten tall, tasty tangerine time with Tony? How about just time with Tony? I like that. That sounds good. Hi, I'm Dot. Thanks for your question about getting to know God better. I have good news. You can if you really want to. In the book of Philippians it says, Philippians 3, 10. I want to know Christ better. I want to know the power that raised him from the dead. Christ is Jesus. We can get to know Jesus every day. When we know Jesus better, we will also know how great God's power is. The Word of God is like seeds that a farmer throws on the soil. Some people hear about Jesus, but they never take the time to get to know Him better. We want to be good soil that hears and listens, gets excited, but then continues to get to know Jesus and trust Him. When we do that, God's power grows amazing things in our lives. Just like a microscope is a tool we can use to see certain things, we have tools to help us know God better. Tools like prayer, worship, and reading the Bible, God's Word. I learned today that the key to getting to know Tony better was to just spend time with Him. That's how it is with Jesus too. 
The more time we spend with him, the better we'll know him. Jesus' disciples know him. A disciple is a follower. The more you follow Jesus, the better you'll know him. The more you know Jesus, the better follower you'll be. Works out pretty good. I hope this answers your question, Harvey, and helps you to get to know God a whole lot better. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Tango time with Tony. Uh, telephone time with Tony. Hmm. Oh, 12 minute trot time with Tony. The possibilities are limitless. Today, we learned that Jesus' disciples know him. If you want to become one of Jesus' disciples who knows, loves, and follows him, it all starts with your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. If you want to make the decision to follow Jesus today, be sure to talk to your Connect small group leader before you leave.